This podcast is rated for a mature audience only. If you are under 18 years old, this content is not for you. Thank you for visiting us. There's plenty of other content on YouTube for you to watch. Have a great day. All content not created by the blue-haired bingo babe, that's me, belongs to its original creator. It is used to substantiate, augment, or exemplify this author's content. It is used under Title 17, Section 107 of U.S. Code, governing fair use for news, education, and critique. Good morning. It's February 17th, 2024, and I want us to just take a look at the maps again to get ourselves oriented for the next part of this conversation. The map is oriented north, and number four down there in the lower left is Jody Sue's old cabin on the Bernard property, 125 Ben Hill Road. You can see the location a little better in this shot. And number three is the pullout where there's two tires down at the base of Jody Sue's cabin driveway, but it's actually located that little pullout on the Wells property. Just above number three is the beginning of the Wells driveway. If you caught the clip that White Boy Lockdown Radio did where he walked up the Bernard driveway, he talks about a curve that he didn't want to go around because it was a blind curve for him. Can't say I blame him, but I don't really understand why he was trespassing on other people's property on Ben Hill Road anyway. And no, I did not watch his clip. The reason I'm showing you this is because I was part of a live chat last night where people who have been following the case for two years and eight months were still unaware of how Jody Sue's cabin, her driveway, the pull out the Wells driveway and Dobbs property layout on Ben Hill Road. So I hope this helps you out a little bit better. From here on out, it's going to feel a little rocky. To some of you, it might feel like, you know, the rocking of a sailboat in a light breeze. To other of you, it's going to feel like a tilt a whirl. And I apologize for that, but in the order of the way things were revealed to us is the way that I'm going to have to lay out a few more things. Some things didn't come out until 2022. Some things didn't come out until 2023. And as you're painfully aware, people are still talking and things still do not add up. Let's go back to the afternoon of June 15th and deal with the now infamous screen. The night Summer went missing, the neighbor swears that she and her two children heard a scream shortly before they joined the search for a now missing Summer Wells. It's there, but you won't forget. To watch and hypervigilant. That's how Jody Sue Brown was the very day Summer Wells went missing. Summer went missing. Kind of goofing off maybe at JD's expense a little, because I still had no clue what had what I'd been used for. Um, so I thought I thought all kinds of things. Anyway. And, um, you know, that was the high drama, right? Uh, so, uh, and then we were just, like, normal, um, for the kids and I. Um, the kids and I were in the cabin. Um, the doors open, the windows open, no TV or anything going. Um, for the most part, um, the cabin itself was pretty empty, um, I had a bed in there, um, fish tank, that type of thing, you know. Um, but it was actually a pretty good feeling day, so air conditioning wasn't on, anything like that. Uh, felt pretty nice. We're going to start off with the weather, just like we did on Friday and Sunday, because I think the weather may have played a factor in few of us are giving enough credit for. Between Friday and Sunday evening, there were thunderstorms in the East Tennessee, West Kentucky, and West Virginia area that uh, were pretty heavy and the sky stayed overcast and didn't clear permanently until almost six o'clock on Tuesday, June 15, 2021. It was blistering hot for two days over the weekend and it began to cool off towards Monday night and Tuesday morning, but it was still 82 degrees at 3 p.m. on June 15th. No TV, no noise at all. Jody Sue was in her cabin with her teenage kids, 19 and 14. 
waiting for anything. We were kind of hyper alert because um, of property things that had happened the day before. So we were listening for noise, everything was kind of quiet. It was a different angle than the house, so sounds were a little different to it than, say, the house was. And it was a little closer to Candace's than the house. And my daughter was towards my feet and to the left and closest to the cabin doors, which were just two, three feet maybe, most. We were laughing, cutting up, sharing jokes. At that point, it wasn't even at JD's expense or anything. It was just usual us having a good time together, especially while Baltimore was not present. Uh, they were being pretty, pretty loud. Um... That day there hadn't been a lot of noise other than the woodcutters uh, with the two crews and such. There were several points in the day where um, I'd heard noises outside um, in the roadway below us, other places up and down, even with the woodcutters, and it had brought me out of the cabin uh, to check the banks and to look down and make sure the roadway was clear and no cars were parked there and JD wasn't back. Uh, doing anything crazy. Um, and then at one point, as we get closer to the minutes that... Oh. I never really saw anything that day. Um, no cars really sitting. No... Not much of anything. Every time I was brought out of the cabin and... Around, you know, three, they cut out. And at some point after that, I heard a car door slam. It was something like um, a road that kind of faces the right of way that also cuts through this property, too, um, that splits this one in parts and goes back. There's another road that faces it that's named Simpson. Um, not to be confused with another one across the main road. So, I hear what I feel like is a car door coming from there, and I, I, that hit me as odd. Um, and I think we go out at that point and look around, didn't see anything. And, um, you know, we end up going back in. Um, I'm doing my best here. She has started and stopped and restarted this piece three times. Oh, we heard a car door. Just one. Um, never heard an engine or a car leave, even though it was quiet. Uh, we walked the bank for quite a you know, few minutes. Um, okay, we just have to stop so that people get a good idea who are still confused. You see the tires that mark the cutout I've been talking about and she talks about. Across from that is Flowers Mailbox and all the things she messes with. In the background, going diagonally up from right to left is the Wells driveway. That's how far away it is. This picture was taken by Scott E. Skulls in April of 2022 when he went down with the specific purpose of filming all the areas associated with Summer Wells. Because it was springtime, the trees were just beginning to bud but you could still see everything you wanted to see through them and in my opinion nobody has done it better than scott imagine in june not being able to see the driveway of the wells house or the house up on the hill looked and the tires hadn't been moved and while he was doing that and while we were on the bank, there was a there was a car that went up Candace's driveway. Now, the angle of I know that something was wrong with it is the reason I asked him. It was something about the color, the rotation of, and the way it hit the driveway because uh, the new Subaru. It's anyway. But for some reason in my head, there was a flash of red going up the driveway that was wrong. It wasn't shiny, it didn't have the gloss, it wasn't right. And, and the way the traction switched over for the Subaru was entirely different than whatever this was that day. 
ever completed the loop for their driveway, like to pull in at the top, like towards where Grandis's camper was. And it was almost like it had stopped at the basement. Okay, we need to get our bearings here because she started one part of this story and stopped and started over three times. This part seems to be picking up from about, uh, I want to say in this video, six minutes ago. So she's telling us, or she's got us, uh, involved in the story that there is a red flash going up the driveway. By the way, did you see it? Some of you will, some of you won't. 2.9 seconds, there was a flying red truck that landed just to the right of the birch tree and then disappeared. That's my point. She's got us involved in this red flash that she can't see going up the driveway because there's all kinds of trees and underbrush. Those of you old school types like me have heard these clips, these raw clips. <sighs> How many times have we heard them? I don't know. Let's just get to the screen. And quite frankly, I really don't know what time of day we're at right now. There were virtually no messages, you know, one here, one there, a couple hours apart um, in the early afternoon between Andy and Jody Sue. The pace didn't pick up until almost five o'clock. And then at one point, as we get closer to the minutes that... Oh, I never really saw anything that day. Um, Here's what I want you to see. Watch again. Hold that thought. Hold on to your seat for just a second while I rummage around for another clip. Be right back. The next sound was harder to justify. Summer is thought to go missing. Jody Sue, her son, and her daughter heard something far more suspicious. A scream. Stopped all three of us cold. Her daughter was the first to go to the cabin door. Then all three were there listening still. We heard just this kind of shrill, almost animalistic scream. Animalistic, but not an animal. Knew it was you know, wrong. It wasn't a dog. It wasn't an animal. That vigilance kicking into overdrive. Jody Sue and her son went out to look for the source of the scream. My son and I decided to go out, look and see what we could see. We went back onto the bank, didn't see anything, didn't hear anything. They went on with their evening. The kids returned to being kids. Jody Sue headed down her driveway around six to ten to flowers. And at this point, I start hearing Candace hollering for summer. And then my brain immediately went, you know, scream earlier this. Uh oh. Yep. And one more posted by Nature Lover, a clip from February 14th, 2024. I too have seen all these things. Um, and I know things about that, um, that clearly Fred does not. And I knew them even before law enforcement did on June 15th. I also know the vehicles that went in and out of that fucking road that day. I have video, like it's face on video. Three different cameras at one time trying to sweet talk me into giving back this one going up the road from the job and stall pump. I mean, I want you to get you to Let's put up characters and their roles and archetypes, shall we? If you're new here, we are taking a look at the case of missing child Summer Wells in a different light. We are not doctors, lawyers, psychiatrists. We don't play them on TV. And so I decided to do this study in a way that's familiar to everybody. Everybody has encountered storytelling their whole lives and for millennia as human beings. So on the left are character roles. The protagonist obviously is Summer Wells. We do not yet know who the antagonist is. Deuterotagonists are the secondary characters. They're, they could be considered sidekicks 
um, in Lord of the Rings type fashion. There's um, a confidant, somebody who's very close to Summer, who, you know, would be her sort of advisor, mentor, what have you. We need to figure out who that person is. The secondary characters are the ones who, even if we don't see them very often, they play a key role in her life. The tertiary characters are everybody else in the crowd. And some of those people may be very influential, powerful, or important people for a short time. For example, the responding officers to the 911 call for Summer Wells being missing are tertiary characters. In the right-hand column, character archetypes, these are the personality types or character traits that you see in people, but it's framed in the language of literature. So, for example, most of you know what a hero is, and you also also know what an anti-hero is. But do you know the difference between an antagonist and a foil? And what the job of the foil is in storytelling? Keep in mind also that when characters first appear in a story, they appear to us one way. And over time, they can change hats and show different characteristics. Like... A caregiver could eventually become a benevolent ruler, for example. In show notes, there's always tons of links. And I've started re-including both the short version and the long version of character studies. You might see other roles or other themes or other... Um, Things that you're familiar with, like the romantic interest, for example. Well, Summer Wells is a five-year-old little girl, so that doesn't apply, and I left it off the list. I try to keep it down to a list that's manageable. And with that, we're done for the day. But I cannot leave you without saying thank you so much to the people who have had clips featured in this broadcast. I could not do it without those clips, and I am glad I'm not a clip channel. That said, I am going to start polling for some of the tertiary characters who don't show up a third or fourth time and see where you think they fit. God bless you. See you real soon.